Parenting is hard and being a calm parent is even harder. Hi guys, my name is Ashley Wilson. Thank you for joining me today. We are gonna be chatting about the number one trick tip tool I have for you to remain a calm, cool, collected, peaceful parent to bring that calm into your home and be able to share it with your kids. So if you are interested in hearing how I stay calm and in control of myself with my seven children, keep on watching. If you are not new to my channel, you know that positive, peaceful parenting is a passion of mine. That's a lot of alliteration. I apologize, uh, but it truly is. It really has become a passion of mine. If you are new to my channel, I will have my positive parenting playlist. Wow. So much alliteration linked down in the description box for you. And you can hear about my journey through parenthood, how I went from an angry, controlling, authoritarian parent to one who values relationship with my children over just about everything else and one who is most of the time much more calm and patient, even though over the course of that journey, we have added many children to our family. We do have seven children ranging in ages from almost 14 down to one year old. So we're going to talk a bit today about kind of the best tool, the best trick that you can have to stay calm. So in my last parenting video where I discussed the need for self-control, I mentioned that kind of the big turning point for me was taking the scream free parenting class. You can just read the book. If there's not a class available to you, that is going to also be linked down in the description box. It's called scream free parenting. Some of you said that you thought I was saying screen with an N free parenting. And while there are seasons of life where we do away with all screens, we are not a screen free household. <laughs> um, so no scream free. And it's not so much about the actual yelling because not everyone is a yeller. We can scream at our kids without raising our voice. We can scream at them through our tone, we can scream at them through our actions. We can scream at them by giving them a cold shoulder and ignoring them. There's a lot of ways to scream at your kids. So don't think that if you don't have a problem with yelling, that this is not for you because it is, it is absolutely. Um, if you want more calm and peace in your home, this is absolutely for you. So, I swear we're getting into the tip. We're getting into the tip. This is important, like introductory information um, that, you know, how do you get from the desire to be in control of yourself, understanding that the only person you can control is you. How do you get from point A to point B? How do you actually stay calm when faced with one of your anger triggers when your child says or does something or spills something for the 50th time after you've begged them to please keep their food in the kitchen, no food in the living room. How do you deal with these triggers? How do you get through them calmly? And here my friends is the key. Told you it was coming. Find your pause. It is so, so simple and so difficult in execution. <laughs> What that phrase, find your pause, what that means is literally close your mouth, do nothing between the trigger and your response. You need to pause. You need to think about how you want to handle the situation that's in front of you. You need to be able to handle it like an adult and you want this, whatever it is that you need to deal with, you want to deal with it calmly and with a sense of authority that is leading your children and not bossing your children. What a pause might look like is you walk into the room and you know you see a big mess and that really triggers you, makes you really angry and you're like, normally your response might be, what are you guys doing? Would you please clean this up? This is absolutely ridiculous. How many times do I have to tell you? Don't do this. Pick that up. Throw that away. What were you thinking? That's a screaming response. So what you would want to do in that situation, because I'm giving you the situation because this is a very um, uh, pertinent one for me. I am triggered by messes. I like things not to be neat and tidy, but I don't like chaos. So what that means for me in that moment is 
seeing the mess and stopping and taking a breath. And then there's probably some internal dialogue happening with the calm Ashley and the angry Ashley going back and forth. And it looks like, okay, what's the outcome that I want here? I want the mess cleaned. But do I want the mess cleaned while kids are crying? And, and do I want to be fuming around the house and just constantly just feeling this pent up rage? Or do I want, okay, what I want here is to take a deep breath and say, guys, let's get this mess cleaned up. I'll pause your TV show. When it's done, we'll turn it back on. And it's me staying calm. It's telling my kids what I want from them without screaming, without yelling, without being angry. And I have some little mantras that I repeat to myself in different situations. I will say to myself when I need just that moment between the trigger and my response, I will say, relationship before rules, connection before correction. I want an obedient heart, not a compliant child. Holy Spirit, how do you want me to handle this situation? Oh, Lord, help me. There are definitely some thrown up prayers in my pause. Sometimes it looks like saying to myself, he's only, he's only five. She's only three. He's only 12. Because when I remind myself that my child is only a child, then I can remember back to what I know, which is that sometimes children do things because they're children and they're immature and they may be untaught and they don't notice things the way that I notice things. I'm a noticer. I notice a lot of things. Ask my husband. I'm, I, I'm, I can get real nitpicky because I notice details and I notice things that other people don't. So maybe you're a noticer and your kids aren't and they just, you know, they're doing their kid thing and they're having fun and playing with their siblings and a mess gets made in the process. Do you really want your kids to not have fun and be creative with one another just so that you can avoid the mess? Or do you want to deal with it calmly so that the creativity and the fun and the play can continue and over time you will train your children to make sure that they're cleaning up after themselves as they go. Does that make sense? So this is useful in every situation. When your child spills something at the table, there's a quote that about, you know, spilled milk and damaging our child's heart and like what's really more important? Like the spilled milk or our immature child who's learning and we're shaming them for a lack of bodily control when their you know gross motor skills aren't fantastic in all of these situations whether it's with my teenager when he says or does something that i'm not a real big fan of do i immediately fly off the handle and react to the situation or do i take a moment or two or 10 or 30 and pause and then come back with a response and that's the thing with the pause when you first start implementing the pause in your parenting, you might need five minutes to calm down and decide what you want your response to be. So you might walk in the room, see the mess and go, mommy needs a few minutes. I'm going to take a pause and turn around and walk to your room. And great job, mom, because you've just modeled to your children how not to respond in anger. So at first that pause might be five minutes. And then with more practice, you only need a minute or two to be able to decide what you want your response to be. And then with time, your pause only needs to be five seconds because you've trained yourself how you actually want to respond in love to your kids. And then you come back into the room when you've gained your composure and you've decided how you actually want to handle the situation, not how your angry triggered brain wants to react to the situation because there's such a big difference between a reaction and a response. Reactions are almost always born from emotion and they're what's the first thing that comes to mind when you see or hear something that sets you off. A response is thought out um, and it's determined by logic and by long-term outcome, what you're actually working towards with your kids instead of flying off the handle. I say all of this in love because I still sometimes struggle with these things. And these things were a really big struggle for me for years and years and years. I was a reactive parent. 
not a responsive parent. I reacted to everything. And I usually reacted by blowing my top. And I know some of you have that same response ingrained in you, whether that's a reaction that your parents taught you because that's how they reacted to you, or whether it's born from trauma or, or just this lack of experience and the way that kids just have a tendency to turn our worlds upside down. Kids are amazing. They're so good at um, bringing all of the things inside of us that are not very nice. They have a way of bringing those to light and that's a gift because then we can deal with those things. So this has been a very long winded video, I think. I'm gonna wrap it up here. I encourage you, I challenge you to find your pause today. When the next time you feel that anger rising up because of a behavior or a tone of voice or an immature reaction from your kids, find your pause. Thank you guys so much for being here. I hope that this video has been helpful to you. Like I said, I will have my positive parenting playlist down in the description box for you. And I will see you guys very soon. Mwah. Bye.